Thank you. I appreciate uh, Senator Crapo for having this uh, this meeting today. Look, this is uh, the most punitive tax of all. We just got the numbers this morning from Ohio, uh, 8300 bucks a year in additional spending on energy, on food, um, utility bills generally, uh, on clothing, 8300 bucks a year. That's based on our numbers that we have in Ohio uh, on January till now in terms of inflation and extrapolating that out for the rest of the year. That's impossible for people to handle if they're on a fixed income. Um, a lot of lower middle income folks in Ohio are suffering the worst, some of whom have long commutes. I'm hearing from them. I was home over the break uh, to talk about other issues, but pretty much everybody got around to inflation, uh, no matter what the other topic was that we talked about. And uh, this is something that, uh, unfortunately, is going to get worse, not better, unless we change policies. So we have the worst inflation in 40 years. Uh, we've got this 1.3 percent last month. By the way, when you extrapolate that over the next year, that's 16.8 percent. I mean, that's, uh, that's just unimaginable, even higher than the Carter years. So um, what do we do? Well, I think Senator Cornyn said it well. You know, we've got to deal with the supply side. Demand reduction is not where we want to go with higher and higher interest rates. Uh, some of that's necessary at this point, I suppose. What we want to do is help on the supply side of the economy, including producing more fossil fuels here in this country and all forms of energy in order for us to see the price go down at the pump and, and the utility bills go down. Uh, we want to see uh, regulatory relief and certainly not tax hikes, <laughs> but rather more pro-growth policies as we had before the pandemic. Remember, during that time period, we had low inflation. And we had a strong and growing economy. We had 3 percent wage growth every month, at least, for the 19 months prior to the pandemic. Now we see just the opposite. Wages are growing, but not nearly as fast as inflation. So everybody's feeling like they're losing ground. And what the Democrats' answer is, instead of helping on the supply side, doing things that are counterinflationary, is they're proposing things that are going to make it worse. Um, this chart is an example of that, and by the way, it does hit people well under 400,000 bucks a year. But the bigger point is that it's pro-inflation, because when you tell a pass-through company, which is, you know, 99 percent of the small businesses in Ohio and around the country, you're going to have to pay more in taxes, where does it come from? Well, a lot of that gets passed along to the consumer. Some of it comes out of workers' wages, but all of that is going to add to inflation. So this is exactly the wrong way to go. Uh, I'm a pass-through owner. A lot of my colleagues are. I grew up in a pass-through company. You know, we used to get a dividend for one reason only. That's to pay taxes. The rest got reinvested in the, in the company. And yet it all showed up on the individual income tax form because it passes through to you. So I think a lot of Democrats maybe don't realize that's how these companies work. And when you're saying you're going to put taxes on the person who has that income reflected in their individual income tax rate, they take that often out of the company uh, and or, again, pass this along to the consumers and to the employees. So my hope is that the Democrats will see that this is the wrong way to go. Don't add more stimulus spending. That's one thing they're talking about. Don't tax America's small businesses. That's pro-inflationary. Instead, do what we did before the pandemic that was working for everybody particularly for lower and middle income workers. They were the ones who benefited the most from that growing economy and rising wages. If we do that, we'll begin to get out from under this unbelievable inflation that we're now facing and begin to get the country back on track.